Emotions are powerful. They add color to our life experiences, they filter what we remember, and they influence what we choose to do. We're surrounded today by amazing technology that can help us plan our day, find directions in a foreign country, translate languages. The voice recognition on my cell phone means that I can ask what the weather will be tomorrow or who the artist singing the last song was. Our heating systems can even adapt, predicting when we'll get home in order to save us money and energy. But despite this advanced hardware and software, these devices that surround us are still oblivious to how we feel, and they can't respond naturally. Imagine waking up, and when you look in the mirror, it could sense how excited you were about the day ahead, or whether you were suffering from a poor night's sleep. When you get into your car, if you're feeling down, it could suggest a more scenic route to take or another radio station to listen to. On a more serious note, using the same sensor data, an app on a smartphone or smartwatch could help someone suffering from depression to give their loved ones daily updates on their mood and how they're doing. That's the potential of emotion-aware computing. Devices that can detect, interpret, and adjust to human emotions. How many of you have seen an article recently about emotions and technology? There are headlines on tech news sites like these on a fairly regular basis now, but that's actually a really new thing. When I was an undergrad studying machine learning, I was fascinated by what we could teach computers to do. But I was equally frustrated by their lack of soft skills. A device around me couldn't tell if I was angry because my code wouldn't compile or delighted by a conversation I'd had with a friend. That's what got me inspired to think about how we could relate emotions and computers. Wouldn't it be better if the devices we spend so much time interacting with could respond more naturally to how we behave? Detecting human behavior is one of the first steps to building emotion-aware devices, and it's hard. We need to be able to detect subtle changes in facial expressions, in physiology, in speech patterns. Much of my work focuses on using webcams and algorithms to capture these emotional signals. And let's start with one of the richest sources of emotional information, the human face. How can we teach your iPad to recognize your facial expressions? In order to do this, we need to give it a huge number of examples, which have been painstakingly labeled by humans. The more diverse these examples, the more quickly and more accurately the computer will learn, just as when a child learns to recognize objects. Over the past five years, we've been collecting this data, and we can now train algorithms that take the texture and shape of the person's face from a video and build models for each facial expression and do this analysis in real time. My colleagues and I have been building the world's largest database of human emotion measurements by capturing people's facial expressions. This data has huge scientific value. It captures all the subtleties and nuances that we see in everyday expressions of emotion. It has examples from 75 countries across six continents. And it's allowed us to do fascinating research. In order to collect this data, Hundreds of thousands of people around the world have opted in uh, to take part in our studies and contribute their emotion data. And in everyday life, it's an interesting question how you elicit those emotions. One way to do it is to show people media content, whether it's news reports, TV shows, election debates, or movie trailers. 
with the wealth of content that's available online and that people watch every day, it isn't hard to find good examples. Just think about the last video you watched on social media or Charlie bit my finger, Gangnam Style. They all elicit a reaction and they're perfect material for eliciting emotional responses. So what we do is capture people's reactions via their webcams while they watch this content. But building this technology might seem intimidating in some cases. It's really important that in every case people actively consent and choose to opt into these studies to share their data. In all of the studies we run, that's the case, and that's something we've designed right from the start. And actually, hundreds of thousands of people have chosen to contribute this data, which is really, really encouraging. In everyday life, we have the ability to mask our emotions if we want to. For instance, smiling at a social occasion, even if we're feeling sad. And I believe that we should still have that ability. It's really important that we can keep our emotion data private if we want to. But there are so many applications that could benefit from sensing that if we want it to. This data we've collected, this huge corpus of emotional uh, responses has allowed us to answer fascinating scientific questions about how humans express themselves. We found that culture influences when and where people express emotions. In the US, people tend to smile more when they're around people they don't know versus people they do know, perhaps to build friendships or to engender liking. But actually, in other cultures, the inverse is true. People express more when they're around their family and friends. And maybe that's because they feel more comfortable in that context. We found that males tend to express less positive and more negative emotion than females. This is something that many of us might associate with. And it's a social norm that is extremely consistent across many countries and cultures. Identifying these differences in cultural, in gender, and age-related expressions of emotion has allowed us to build really accurate software that can detect and interpret people's emotions. And we're just at the start. But that's enough about the research and the theory behind this. Let's see it in action. I have a volunteer from the team who's going to come up and try this out. So our software here is taking uh, the video from the camera on the iPad and it's tracking uh, her face. And using this software, we can use the texture of an, uh, for information from the video in order to predict uh, what facial expressions are present. So we can detect smiles, that's beautiful, and smirks. So there's really interesting uh, differences between the way people express um, these actions, being able to detect differences uh, between, subtle differences bete between uh, how people behave is really important. We can detect expressions of disgust. Okay, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. This software... This software can run on everyday devices that people have in their pockets and in their bags. And that's really important because it means that it can scale. Actually, the apps we use every day can leverage this emotion layer and improve the user experience. And I, for one, are, are really excited about how that will change our interactions with computers. We're already seeing it being implemented in games, video conferencing, educational material, and healthcare applications. But that's facial expressions. In 2010, we actually showed that using a webcam video of a human face could be used not only to capture the facial expressions that they were exhibiting, but also their physiological signals. By capturing subtle changes in the light reflected from the skin, we can measure blood flow. 
And from that, we can capture heart rates, respiration rate, and even measure the cognitive stress that someone's experiencing when they're trying to solve a problem. This has huge implications because we can measure health parameters in a scalable, low-cost way using ubiquitous devices. I'm currently working with clinicians in hospitals to help them identify physical symptoms of a range of conditions using this technology. And it demonstrates how the relationship between our emotions and our health is actually a really close one. The same signals are really important in both cases. And this can potentially transform the way that we think about global health and measuring uh, physiological parameters on a, on a large scale. So measuring facial expressions, physiology, speech patterns, and context, we can create a rich picture of someone's emotional state and do this on devices that we have around us every day. It will make our interactions more fluid. It will help technology move into the background and allow us to be more present. And th there's a huge number of applications this could uh, be used for. Um, there's two that I'm particularly passionate about. Massive online courses are providing high quality education to a huge number of people. But the traditional interaction between a teacher and a pupil has been lost. It's really hard for a lecturer or instructor to know whether their students are frowning or smiling because they're not there in person. This technology could be used to detect and aggregate that information to allow educators to improve the quality of their content, knowing when people are getting confused and when they're finding it too easy. From education to healthcare, there are many areas in which emotion sensing could help improve our wellness. There's a lot of research to be done in this space, but devices like the wristwatch I'm already wearing can measure how many steps I take and suggest when to do exercise or take a break from my desk. But what about conditions that are harder to track? Many people struggle with depression. It's a condition that's extremely hard to monitor, even if someone's in a treatment program. This technology could be used to monitor the progress, recovery uh, from such a condition, something that would be useful for clinicians and for loved ones. I personally experienced the heartbreaking consequences of depression, and I earnestly hope that this technology can make a difference in that space. From education to healthcare to lifestyle, emotion sensing technology can transform the way we live our lives. My hope is that it helps us care for ourselves and other people more effectively. And that's something we all can and I believe should be a part of. As it becomes mainstream, it will change the way we interact with everyday technology. More importantly, it's going to help us live healthier and better lives. Thank you.